Recording in progress. Okay, let me call the local planning agency meeting of June 14th, 2022 to order. I'm going to ask the city clerk to please call the roll. Mayor Weissman? Here. Vice Mayor Landman? Here. Commissioner Friedland? Present. Commissioner Joel? Here. Commissioner Dr. Marks? Here. Commissioner Narosky? Present. Commissioner Shelley? Here. Mr. Wasson? Present. And Mr. Myers? Here. You have a quorum. Thank you so much. Um, we have a guest in the audience today, and I'm probably going to embarrass him, but I'm going to ask Sam Fruitman to please lead us in the Pledge of Allegiance. I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the republic for which it stands, one nation, under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. I need a motion to approve the minutes of April 5th, 2022, made by Commissioner Narotsky, seconded by Commissioner Friedland. I'm going to ask the clerk for a roll call vote. <laughs> Commissioner Friedland? Yes. Commissioner Joel? Yes. Commissioner Dr. Martz? Yes. Commissioner Narosky? Yes. Commissioner Shelley? Yes. Vice Mayor Landman? Yes. Mayor Weissman? Yes. The motion passes. Okay, the next order of business is item number four. It's a motion recommending adoption of the following ordinances. I'm going to request the city clerk to read ordinance A. An ordinance of the City of Aventura, Florida, amending section 31-143, residential zoning districts of the city's land development regulations to permit buildings in the RMF4 zoning district to cast shadows on properties located in business zoning districts upon conditional use approval, providing for severability, providing for inclusion in the code, and providing for an effective date. Thank you. Can I please have a motion recommending the adoption of that ordinance made by Commissioner Joel, seconded by Commissioner Shelley. I'm going to request that Community Development Director Kevin Klopp review the item with the commission. Thank you, Mayor. Good evening. Kevin Klopp, Community Development Director. If I could get the uh, presentation uh, up on the screen. There we go. Thank you. And uh, going to let you know that all of the items here at this LPA meeting are related. So I have one presentation that will flow into each thing. Uh, the first is one slide for this ordinance, and I just want to point out what I've highlighted on the screen. This is not specific to one property, but it is specific to a rather uh, simplistic uh, set of circumstances. RMF4 currently cannot cast a shadow onto business zoning. This would allow that to happen with a conditional use. You saw this at a recent workshop, and uh, it would be something that would facilitate a project that has been proposed. So I'm happy to answer any questions. The change is as simple as what you see, the underlined section would be added to the code that buildings designed and situated in a way that they cast a shadow upon properties located in business zoning districts would be allowed with a conditional use approval from the commission. Um, Mr. Klopp, do you have any map that will show us where in the city RMF4 is? I don't have it with me. I certainly can have it presented to you all. Uh, if you like, It'd just take me a moment to pull it up. Uh, on, I'd have to get onto the internet, and then we, then I could show you. Would you like me to do that? I really would. I'd like the commission to be able to also. Perhaps Mr. Adler can help you. Okay. Well, we have a printout of it here. Um, now, your question is, which RMF4 properties would be adjacent to business zoning? Okay, uh, there are not many. Um, you're really looking at the south portion of the city between 
185th and 183rd at this point. Okay. Does anyone, do any other commissioners have any questions? Okay, I'm going to open the item for public comment, and I'm going to request members of the public to state their name and address, and you have three minutes to speak on the item. Is there anyone from the public that would like to address this, this item? Seeing as there is none, <clears throat> I'm closing it for public comment, and I'm going to ask the clerk for a roll call vote. Commissioner Friedland? Yes. Commissioner Joel? Yes. Commissioner Dr. Marks? Yes. Commissioner Narosky? Yes. Commissioner Shelley? Yes. Vice Mayor Landman? Yes. And Mayor Weissman? Yes. The motion passes. Thank you. Uh, the next item on the agenda is the quasi-judicial procedures, and they shall be invoked for item 4B and 4C. I'm going to request the city attorney to provide the procedures for the quasi-judicial hearing for items 4B and 4C. Thank you, Mayor. Uh, please be advised that the following items on the commission agenda are quasi-judicial in nature. If you wish to object or comment upon the item, please inform the mayor when she requests public comments. An opportunity for persons to speak on the item will be made available after the applicant and staff have made their presentations on the item. All testimony, including public testimony and evidence, will be made under oath or affirmation. Additionally, each person who gives testimony may be subject to cross-examination. If you, ref you refuse either to be cross-examined or to be sworn, your testimony will be given its due weight. The general public will not be permitted to cross-examine witnesses, but the public may request the commission to ask questions of staff or witnesses on their behalf. Persons representing organizations must present evidence of their authority to speak for the organization. Further details of the quasi-judicial procedures may be obtained from the city clerk. Thank you, sir. I'm going to request the clerk to swear in those wishing to offer testimony on items 4B and 4C. If you are willing, wishing to speak, please stand. This is for items 4B or 4C. If you will be providing comments, you need to stand up and be sworn in at this time. Do you solemnly swear or affirm the testimony you're about to give is the truth, the whole truth, and nothing but the truth, so help you God. Thank you. I will wait till you're seated, <laughs> and then I will request that you read the ordinance. B. An ordinance of the City of Aventura, Florida, amending the comprehensive plan by amending the future land use map designation for a 1.55 acre parcel of land located at 2785 Northeast 80, 183rd Street from business and office to high density residential, providing for conflicts, providing for severability, providing for inclusion in the comprehensive plan, and providing for an effective date. Can I please have a motion recommending the adoption of the ordinance made by Commissioner Joel, seconded by Commissioner Friedland? Um, I'm going to request once again that Director Klopp please review the item with the commission. Thank you again. So this is the first of two quasi-judicial items this evening before you. The first item was a city application changing our code. These two applications are from uh, got 183 LLC, the company uh, that has uh, a contract to purchase the property, which is located, shown here, uh, with 185th Street on the right, 183rd Street on the left, and the property is shown with the uh, yellow boundary around it. Again, we did have a workshop presentation related to this project, both in April and in May. Uh, tonight, uh, first you have uh, approved the revision to the limitation on shadows on first reading. That will come back to you for second reading next meeting. These two items are the comprehensive map change, comprehensive plan map change, and the rezoning. The change in the comprehensive plan is from business and office to medium high density residential. And I do need to, at this time, ask that my report be uh, included in the record as to the findings uh, and analysis of this application. I'll let you know that uh, everything is fine. 
there is one Scrivener's error in uh, both the report and even the title of the ordinance. The city doesn't have a high density land use category in our comp plan. We have it on our zoning map, the county has it, but the official title of our comp plan category is called medium high density residential. So I just need to put on the record that that will be changed between first and second reading. So it officially says medium high density residential uh, comprehensive plan designation. The standards of review are in section 3173 of city code. All the standards are met in general. It was consistent with the comprehensive plan. It's consistent with the code. It facilitates the redevelopment of fallow land. Uh, and again, a note here in the report, it does in one place say that the um, site has a office building on it. That office building has demolished, so that should have been deleted from the report. Uh, the public facilities are available to service the use, and it provides for orderly development in character with the surrounding neighborhood. So staff uh, has found this consistent and recommends favorably. Uh, there has been uh, some Questions about traffic, uh, which was addressed at the workshop, but in general, the uh, preliminary traffic report says, since the proposed project generates less than 100 net new two-way vehicle trips during the AM and peak AM hours, the project will not affect the level of service of the adjacent roadway network. And uh, there are, uh, there's a uh, study available that shows, and as was presented at the workshop meeting, um, what could be built here is far more traffic generating under the current zoning than what is proposed to be built under the rezoning. So again, we find this acceptable and recommend in favor. Happy to take any questions. Thank you. Do any commissioners wish to address anything in the item to Mr. Klopp? All right, then I'm going to open up the item for public comment and see if anyone from the public wishes to address this item. Seeing as there are none, I'm closing this item to public comment. And I'm going to ask the clerk for a roll call vote. Commissioner Friedland? Yes. Commissioner Joel? Yes. Commissioner Dr. Marks? Couldn't hear her. You're on mute. Yes. Commissioner Narosky? Yes. Commissioner Shelley? Yes. Vice Mayor Landman? Yes. And Mayor Weissman? Yes. The motion passes. Thank you. I'm going to now, and congratulations, gentlemen, I'm going to now request the city clerk to read the ordinance C. An ordinance of the city of Aventura, Florida, amending the official zoning map of the city of Aventura by amending the zoning designation from B2, Community Business District, to RMF4, multifamily high-density residential, for a 1.55-acre parcel of land located at 2785 Northeast 183rd Street, providing for severability, providing for inclusion in the code, and providing for an effective date. Thank you. I need a motion for recommending the adoption of the ordinance. Uh, motion made by Commissioner Friedland, seconded by Vice Mayor Landman. I'm going to request Mr. Klopp again review this for us. Thank you. Uh, I do not have any additional presentation to make. Uh, I do want to take this opportunity to let you know what the next steps are, assuming that uh, you will approve this uh, rezoning ordinance as well as the land use that you just approved. So if the rezoning is approved, the next step is the applicant will be before you for a conditional use and the second readings of these ordinances in July. And they, once, if they receive conditional use approval, will be able to submit for administrative site plan approval and then for their permits. Okay. Uh, any commissioners, any questions, comments? Then I'm opening this item for public comment. Is there anyone from the public that wishes to address this item? Uh, please come up. State your name and address. No, when you get up here, please. <laughs> oh, that's okay. You're welcome. <laughs> okay, my name is Marek Schmiel. I'm a resident of Tarsetto Villas next to the property in question. Uh, my exact address is 18424 Northeast 27th Court. I live just behind this fallow piece of land. Not exactly fallow. It used to have an office building on it. There's a couple of worries we have as residents um, with a building of a multi-use property 
just behind our property. Uh, the first is the original parcel was for res um, retail use or a hotel, and that's been changed to multifamily. Uh, so we're really worried how big they want to do this because the original use was 12 storeys. Um, and I've been living in Aventura, one of the best places in the world, I could say. I love it here um, for many years. And the, the traffic, uh, the infrastructure, our electricity in that quadrant is being goes on and off all the time. So we're very worried as residents that a big... Uh, multi-storey, 18-plus storey building will, will be deposited right onto our doorstep. Um, so we're really worried that uh, it's going to affect our living, because I mentioned the zoning should be in keeping with the neighbourhood. Uh, dropping a big multi-storey building would not be in keeping with that neighbourhood. The majority of that neighbourhood is more like townhouses and low-rises. Any bigger buildings are further away. So that will impact us directly. So yes, I have quite a lot of questions about this proposed planning uh, because I'll be directly affected with it for many years. Well, you still have a minute left. <laughs> oh, a minute left, yes. Yeah. So I'd like to also, um, be when they want to take it to the next step and start bringing in all their plans, I want to make sure that our sewer system and drainage is improved uh, because lately we saw what happened in Aventura when we had that deluge. Uh, half of uh, Biscayne Boulevard was uh, covered with water. And in that little area where I live, um, any more housing will just create more and more water coming up. And how am I going to even drive my car, take my little girl to the park? These are worries I have for me. Uh, plus, the substation there is not really built for what we already have. Uh, it clocks out. So if we have a hurricane, we're down for three weeks. FPL never came in and updated their system. So we're going to have a big tower behind me and you've already given planning approval for the one next to Walgreen, which is 18 storeys, these are all going to be built in the next two to three years. The infrastructure, the traffic, from what was a nice residential area, if they all build hotels, you know, I'll be in Brickle. If I wanted to be in Brickle, I'd have bought in Brickle. I love Aventura. So please keep it Aventura, if you don't mind. Thank you so much. Thank, Thank you. you. And anyone else? Then I'm going to close this for public comment. I'm going to ask Mr. Klopp and the city manager to please get back to this resident. I know you're taking very careful notes. And I am, once again, closing it for public comment. I'll ask the city clerk to please do a roll call vote. Commissioner Friedland? Yes. Commissioner Joel? Yes. Commissioner Dr. Marks? Yes. Commissioner Narosky? Yes. Commissioner Shelley? Yes. Vice Mayor Landman? Yes. And Mayor Weissman? Yes. The motion passes. Thank you. Um, I'm now going to ask for a motion to adjourn the local planning agency meeting. Made by Commissioner Narotsky, seconded by Vice Mayor Landman. Anybody opposed to adjourning? Okay. This meeting is adjourned. Which brings us to the regular City Commission meeting of July 14th, 2022. I'm going to ask the City Clerk to call the roll. Mayor Weissman? Here. Vice Mayor Landman? Here. Commissioner Friedland? Present. Commissioner Joel? Here. Commissioner Dr. Marks? Here. Commissioner Narosky? Present. Commissioner Shelley? Here. Mr. Wasson? Here. And Mr. Myers? Here. You have a quorum. Thank you so much. Uh, we have already done the Pledge of Allegiance, so we don't need to do it again. Um, I'm going to ask the city manager if there are any deletions or additions to the agenda. No, Mayor. No. Thank you, sir. Item four, special presentations. Um, I don't see Representative Geller. So when Representative Geller comes back, I'll reserve the opportunity to let him make his legislative update because... I think we all want to know what went on in Tallahassee. And the next item is employee service awards. And I'll request that the city manager, Ron Wasson, please hand these out. If I could invite Detective Christy Worthington up to the podium. <laughs>
Detective Worthington has been with us for 10 years, but she didn't begin her career in Aventura. She started in North Miami Beach, where she was a very active patrol officer and decided to go to big, bigger and better things in Aventura. In the last 10 years, and, and while she was in, I should say this, while she was in uh, North Miami Beach, she was, became a member of the SWAT team. And I can tell you that is a very prestigious thing to do. It's very rigorous and very difficult. Um, when she came into Aventura, she's been, she's done a lot of things. She's uh, a, t a tactics instructor, active shooter instructor, firearms instructor, and from occasionally she trains the new officers coming on a police department or in the FTO program. Uh, she's also a SWAT officer here, which is, a, again, the first female officer in Aventura history to be part of that unit. Actually, the first time I met Christy, I believe you were jumping out of an airplane. <laughs> <laughs> and that, is, that is a true story, because I was wondering why I was up in the airplane myself doing the same thing. So I knew she had a lot of guts to do that, because uh, it, it's not a usual thing to do. So I'd like to just take the minute to recognize your 10 years of service and hope uh, you have a 10 more for us and give you this 10-year uh, award. Say in Aventura, Mazel Tov. <laughs> Next on our agenda is the update of Aventura City of Excellence School by Principal Tricala. And before you start, I just have to thank you and tell you what an amazing promotional ceremony you held. It was beautiful, it was inspiring, and well thought out. Thank you so much. Thank you. And so, Good evening, Commission, City Manager. Starting with that, we were able to celebrate our kindergarten, fifth grade, and eighth grade uh, students uh, last week as we wrapped up the school year. Um, and it really was a great school year. Um, this week, I'm sitting with 15 of our senior leaders to reflect on last year and begin the planning uh, in earnest for next year. And, and it's been great to really think through, honestly, talking through some of what we dealt with. It's hard for us to remember that was the beginning of this school year. Uh, things, it just feels like years ago, but um, we did a great job and I'm looking forward to data which should come back within a matter of weeks, certainly by the end of June, we're hoping, uh, so that we can start making informed decisions based on the, the hard data. We did get third grade data back. Um, we weren't super surprised by many of the individual students, uh, but in general, our reading, our reading proficiency was at 77%, which is about 10% lower than a typical year. Um, you can't compare year to year as different groups of students, but we do know these are the students who at the end of their first grade year went into uh, lockdown and learned you know, in different modalities um, in general. So as we prepare to change standards next year, we already know these students and we have been tracking them. And similarly, kindergarten, first and second grade students, we know those are the ones we have to pay the most attention to. And that speaks to our, our focus on going into the science of reading I've been telling you about with the systematic phonics instruction where reading is really the most important thing for us to focus on uh, because if they can't do that, that will give them a deficiency across all subjects. Um, speaking of, of learning and training, this summer a lot of leaders and admin and teachers will be conducting training. Uh, our K through three teachers will be doing a training called Letters, which is the world-renowned science of reading training. It takes a full year, gives you 12 college credits and a reading endorsement. They're all starting that this summer and will go as a cohort, all of our kindergarten through third grade teachers next year to all get certified in that um, instruction strategy. Our administration next week will be going to the conference uh, with Charter Schools USA, which is really a working conference towards many of the initiatives we have to have um, in place for next school year. And the following week, myself and six other leaders will go to the Solutions Tree Conference in Charlotte to focus on professional learning communities, which takes all of this data we're talking about and focuses it into the planning, teaching our teachers how to work together, identifying every standard they're teaching based on the testing that they're doing, and just meet weekly to review where individual students are. Um, and so that, those are called PLCs, or professional learning communities, and it really is an important way to drive our instruction. Um, Summer Bridge, and. and 
again, thinking back, you know, I, I feel like summer is almost over and we're in day two or only. Um, you know, Summer Bridge starts July 5th. We'll have the full month of July for students. 170 have confirmed attendance from our K through or K through seven, moving up one through eight students and incoming kindergarten. All of them except eight have already been assessed and over 30 will be attending Summer Bridge as well in preparation uh, for next school year. And so our teachers were eager to volunteer to teach this summer. Uh, there's four day weeks at a half day. Um, so they still get an opportunity to refresh themselves, but they're gonna come in and use data to drive instruction for those students. Um, we've been actively hiring since February uh, with clear communication with our staff telling them the earlier we know you're not coming back, the better we're able to identify someone to come in. Um, they've been open and honest almost to a T. It's because the, either they're moving out of the area, often out of the city, um, or they're focusing on their family. They had a, a baby or soon will have a baby. Uh, I can tell you not one single teacher is leaving our school to go work at another school uh, in this area. And so we feel, we feel that we will be fully staffed by the end of June. Uh, we have good candidates in place, but we need great candidates. So we're going to keep interviewing until we find those right fits. Um, and then lastly, uh, you know, we're really just thinking about what our theme will be for next year and the focus is, is defining excellence. We've talked about excellence being a choice and we say excellence is the expectation, but we found we haven't really said what exactly we're looking for. And so we're looking for excellent effort and excellent character uh, from our students and that will be our focus next year uh, as we move forward. Uh, with that, I'm here to answer any questions you guys might have. Do any commissioners have anything that they want to ask Mr. Dr. Trakala? You wanted to congratulate. I, I just have a comment. I, you know, I was present at the kindergarten promotional graduation, whatever it's called, um, and it was beautiful. And I know all the parents were just so happy to be there and have that in person experience. And especially after the first year of you know their child being at a new school. So, thank you for you know really making a nice event. And it, it was just really nice to be there in person and experience that. All right, thank you. There's something special going on in your building. I have never, and most people know I was an educator my whole life, I've never seen a group of children that kind to each other, no matter the circumstance. So whatever you're doing, keep it up. Awesome, we will, thank you. Dr. McKee, are you gonna give us the update on so far high school? Yeah, I'm still processing so much of that presentation, but Dr. Tukala, congratulations on an amazing year. Um, I agree with you. There's just such a, a joy and happiness that's, that permeates your, your school and your school community, and uh, I know so much of that is due to your leadership. So thank you for that, uh, not just because it's wonderful for our community, <clears throat> but also ultimately wonderful for Don Sofer High, because many of these students are matriculating to us and uh, we're just, we're so grateful, so grateful. Plus, it's a great indicator. In fact, the best indicator of the primary age students being successful throughout their schooling is that they enjoy school. So you're making sure of that, plus, you know, outstanding achievements. So thank you on every level. Awesome. Um, <clears throat> we had a busy final quarter. Uh, you all know we had the Brito unveiling. We had some very special people on campus, uh, former four-time world heavyweight Three-time heavyweight, one-time light heavyweight, boxing champion of the world, Michael Moore, came and he presented with Muhammad Ali Jr. to our students. Um, Lauren Brill, <coughs> who, excuse me, is um, a former award-winning journalist, uh, TV journalist, came and presented to our students an awesome project about writing. Um, we had several other Miami Dolphins. We had the, the music producer, and he, he probably had the most questions asked by the students. He'd worked with Kanye West and pretty much everybody, but uh, 50 Cent, um, yeah, he, he, the kids loved hearing all the stories about their favorite performers. Uh, but on top of that, we were focused on academics as well. We had over 2,000 college credit earning opportunities offered to our students through testing with ACE, the, the Cambridge program, and College Board Advanced Placement. And the wild thing about that is we had never given a Cambridge exam on campus. And this year, uh, over 1,600 of those 2,000 were Cambridge exams. They're very particular. Every desk has to be labeled with the student who will be sitting there. They have to be precisely five feet apart, the writing spot on one to the writing spot on the next. After we gather all the pages, each student's work has to be uh, 
attached by yarn. It can't be staples. They don't want to hurt their fingers in England. So, and then we ship them off to England. It's a very, very involved process. Our students were amazing. Uh, we, we went through scheduling, and at the beginning of the year, most of the schedule changes um, had an echo of what can I do to have an easier high school experience. Um, we went through and assigned students, all of our students to classes. They were given schedules, and they were told to review the schedules and come talk to us. And it was remarkable. I'd say over 80% of the students came back asking for more challenging classes um, and lobbying their cause, saying, I'm going to work harder. I learned a lot of lessons this year about the importance of doing my best. And you're going to see a different student next year. Um, echoed many different ways that same sentiment. And it was wonderful to see. Uh, plus, like I say, just seeing how hard they worked on, on those tests. I met with Mr. Geller yesterday. Uh, his daughter was a great example. Just they, they work till the end. And you know when, when students are willing to work until, because there's a point where, for instance, one test, they can leave after 90 minutes, but they have up to three hours. And when they're going back over and over on their work and just making sure they did everything they could to squeeze out one more point if possible, um, it's really impressive and really heartwarming. So we're excited about the upcoming year. We start our credit recovery lab, and it's also become a credit acceleration lab. We have an equal number of students who are here um, starting next Monday to make up credits as we have students who are coming in to take unweighted classes that are required for graduation so that they can accelerate and take college classes when the year begins. So it's, it's, it's just amazing to see. Um, but it's, it's a school-wide commitment to excellence that is really impressive. And I know that's something that you all worked so hard to create. So thank you for your role in that. Uh, 17 employees will be new next year. We've already onboarded four of them, and 13 more are coming. A brand new assistant principal. I didn't get her enough time to get her outfit together. So otherwise, she would have been here tonight. But you'll meet her, hopefully, at one of the summer meetings. A um, very special woman who's doing a phenomenal job. New counselor, uh, making great connections with the students. So I, I'm excited about the future. We had 170 awards given out last week at our award ceremonies, and one of the award winners, I actually gave him the mic, which was a pretty bold move, I thought, and uh, you've heard him speak many times, I'm sure, but he's a statesman and just an amazing young man, great leader, always has his ear to the needs of his constituents, the students, and has no problem whatsoever sharing those needs with me um, in sometimes a very uh, demanding manner, but rightfully so. He's a great advocate for his constituents and will be hopefully on this board or that'll be en route to the White House, perhaps. We'll see. Um, but do you have any color commentary or anything you'd like to add to the information? Of course you do. <laughs> Dr. Dr. McKee, I want you to know he's just as demanding with us. <laughs> Thank you, Dr. McKee. First of all, on a great year. Sorry, I didn't properly introduce. So this yeah. is Ethan Bazak. He will be our president of the junior class next year, and he's been the president of his freshman class, sophomore class, next year junior class, and ultimately student government association we anticipate. Yes, sir. Ethan Bazak. So thank you, Dr. McKee, for the great introduction once more. Dr. McKee likes to call me persistent, but I know that I've been a stickler over the year to yourselves as well as to himself. But first of all, congratulations on dealing with that. I know it's not easy. Um, <laughs> so essentially what he left out was not only the fact that we've been testing for so long, but in the beginning of the year, I stressed the importance of a student voice, right? Because we have issues that we have to tackle in Don Sofer that cannot be tackled unless the students are able to communicate it to Dr. McKee and to yourselves. And I'm so happy to be able to stand here in front of you guys knowing that Dr. McKee, as long, along with a lot of the school administration, have a solidified plan to ensure that students are able to project their voice to not only himself, but to yourselves and to other students. So this summer, actually, student government will be focused on, on a leadership academy that will be working in conjunction with Dr. McKee, and uh, it'll be run by Mr. Comrink, if I'm not mistaken. So that should essentially solidify the voice of students, and I'm so happy that we're working on that. And I also, lastly, I'm, sorry, I'm taking a lot of time, I also want to congratulate Dr. McKee on his first year as the principal of Don Sofer, you know, a year that I would say is one of the toughest years because this was the recovery from COVID-19. This is essentially what sets the standard for the next years to come in, in Don Sofer. And I'm so happy that we got through a homecoming and through a prom. And kudos to you, Dr. McKee. Thank you so much. Thank you, Ethan. 
Ethan, we've come a long way this year. <laughs> You did drop the mic. You turned it off on me, but that's okay. Um, I just want to say uh, I was having this conversation with one of my supervisors how difficult the beginning was, and this is true of, of education across the board for students, for parents. For, well, some parents were re relieved when the kids went back to school, but uh, just the, the concept of, of being you know, in a structured environment. You can't wear your pajamas and turn off the screen when you get bored and do something else. Um, and And... The progress that was made throughout the year and comparing the beginning of the year to the ending of the year, uh, many schools didn't quite work through those issues. And, and I was asked, what really allowed you all to, to make so much progress? And I have to say, um, the support of, of all of you uh, was phenomenal. Um, Ron, you worked through so many issues with us along the way. And, and just the fact that we knew you had not just, not just your support, but your wise insight. Um, you know, Dr. Marks and, and Ms. Weissman, and everybody, you know, Rachel, thank you so much with uh, Alec, and, and he was also a great leader for us. In fact, he won a leadership award. I don't know if he knows that yet because he wasn't there in the day, but he, he did a great job also. Um, and I, I just, again, want to express my gratitude. So thank all of you. And we thank you. Can you give me an idea of when you anticipate the test scores to come in from the state? By the end of this month. So the third grade, they get out early because they, they impact retentions. And then uh, next round, we'll see, but it should hopefully be the FSA ELA scores, which are very telling, and then we get the EOCs. But by the end of this month, we should have all of the scores. All right, and I, and I just want everyone to remember that for many of our children, particularly at the elementary level, they've been out of school for two years. And Florida's desire to continue testing after two years, we're just, we just know that some children aren't going to make the gains that we would have liked. So I think, you know, everyone needs to be advised of that. Anybody else? Okay. Um, you're both off to a great summer. Uh, what, what about in your building? Are we, you said we're doing accelerated and credit recovery? Correct. That's great. And how many kids do you anticipate? Uh, the, the credits, both the credit recovery and, and virtual advancement opportunities are virtual. So uh, they'll be on campus and off campus and monitored. And we anticipate somewhere 60 to 100 on campus throughout the summer. And then again, many of them, when they travel or do whatever, they'll be off campus. But we have other, other we have the leadership camp. We have, um, we'll do some intramural open gym opportunities for the kids. Uh, we have a, a fitness club that's going to be meeting in the morning. And throughout the summer, the drama is going to be gathering and doing presentations at um, elderly in elderly communities. Great. Uh, so there's there's something every day. It'll be it'll be exciting. Thank you. That's great, um, Mr. City Manager. Do any and any members of the commission would you like to remove any item from the consent agenda? Yes, Mayor. Can I uh, remove item B? <laughs> item B. Okay, so I'm first going to, how do you, uh, Mr. Attorney, do you want me to go through item B first or do you want me to do the consent agenda first minus item B and then take item B separately? I'd go through the consent agenda first and then take item okay. B. Okay, can I have a motion to approve the consent agenda? Made by Commissioner Shelley, seconded by Vice Mayor Landman. Um, I'm going to request the city manager to review the item minus item B. Do you want, you want me to go through item B? No, we're doing the consent per the attorney. It's consent. We, we don't, I, I, think, I think we're all, we know. Um, anyone from the public have any questions except for item B on our consent agenda? Uh, if you, if you have a question, you need to come up, give your name, and, and the question. We're talking about the consent agenda only at this time. Okay. That's okay. All right. Um, since no commissioners and the public have no comments on the consent agenda, I'm going to ask the city clerk for a roll call vote. Commissioner Friedland? Yes. Commissioner Joel? 
Yes. Commissioner Dr. Marks? Yes. Commissioner Narotsky? Yes. Commissioner Shelley? Yes. Vice Mayor Landman? Yes. And Mayor Weissman? Yes. The motion passes. Okay, that brings us to item B of the consent agenda. I'm going to request the city clerk to read item B. A resolution of the City Commission of the City of Aventura, Florida, recognizing June 19th as an observed holiday in the City of Aventura, providing for implementation and providing for an effective date. Okay, I'm going to ask for a motion for approval of this resolution made by Commissioner Shelley, seconded by Commissioner Joel. And I'm going to request the city manager to review this item. Thank you, Mayor. Um, this was really just pulled just to let everybody know that as the federal uh, government recognized Juneteenth as a, as a holiday to be recognized for the, the country, we're doing the same in Aventura. As the Emancipation Proclamation was passed in 1863, it took a little time to get out to the, the, a lot of the states in the South. And until the Union Army could get over to Texas, which was the last state it got to in, I think, 1865 on June 19th, it was finally, the word finally got to that state that slavery was abolished and no longer accepted in, the, in the, these United States. So it was something to be... We just like to recognize, and you know, that was really it. <laughs> okay, and basically, the president of the United States has made this a national holiday, and we're from, from the item we're being asked to approve that. Any commissioners have any comments on this item? Seeing as there are none, I'm going to open it to the public for comment. Does anyone in the public wish to address the commission on this? Seeing as there's none, I'm closing it for public comment and I'm asking the clerk for a roll call vote. Commissioner Freeland? Yes. Commissioner Joel? Yes. Commissioner Dr. Marks? Yes. Commissioner Narosky? Yes. Commissioner Shelley? Yes. Vice Mayor Landman? Yes. And Mayor Weissman? Yes. The motion passes. Thank you. I'm going to ask that the city clerk read the ordinance A. Thank you. Thank you, thank you. One second, Madam Clerk. Um, Representative Geller is here, so we're going to introduce, interrupt the normal agenda, and we're going to ask for Representative Geller's update. Well, thank you. What a pleasure it is to be here with all of you. Haven't been in front of you in a while, and I am sorry I was told the meeting was at 7, so glad to be here with you, though. I do want to say before I begin that I was uh, very happy to see Dr. McKee's here. I missed his uh, remarks, unfortunately, but uh, my daughter goes to that school, and I have to tell you what a great job they do there and what a great job you do in providing that resource to the, the citizens of Aventura. Uh, the school is just, and it's just wonderful. Uh, my daughter, who was not so happy at Aventura Waterways K-8, just loves being at uh, Don Sofer Aventura High School. So on behalf of myself, my family, and all the other families who get to participate, I'd like to thank all of you for making it possible. And I'd like to thank Dr. McKee for running such a terrific program. My, my, my daughter loves it. So um, we got you a pretty nice appropriation in the legislature for the 213th Street Seawall. We worked hard to get that. I'm very sorry to have to tell you that, unfortunately, it was vetoed by the governor. We are unhappy that that is the case. I mean, I know it's needed. It's not the first time that we've gotten the appropriation. And it's not the first time it was vetoed. So I don't want to sound partisan. Please don't. <laughs> but vote that SOB out of office. And hopefully we can see that you get the appropriation that the city so richly deserves and its citizens do next time. And uh, if you want to know what I really think to see me when I'm not at the dais. Um, I'll be quick, but 
What a horrible session. I mean, this is my last one. I've been there eight years. Thank you to all of you. And thank you to all of you for giving me the great honor of being able to represent you in Tallahassee. But this one was terrible. We didn't get business done that we needed to. It was mean-spirited. People were attacked. How do you attack the happiest place on earth? I mean, really, what is that about? So, um, we finally got some stuff done in some special sessions. There were some things done that didn't need to be. We had a bill that was dropped in in one special session an hour before we convened. It was referred to committee and the ink wasn't dry. And they put it on special order for the next day and they just passed it through and no one really knew what was even in it, not vetted or anything. That's not separation of powers and it's not checks and balances. It's, it's one person ruling virtually by decree. But the budget was better than some, I voted for it. The budget did fund some things that needed to be funded. Um, and in the special session that we just ended, we did a few things to address property insurance, which is a real crisis in our state. We didn't do enough, but $2 billion to help the reinsurance market will make some difference given a little bit of time. It's not instantaneous, but... And they did something very useful. They approved $150 million to help people with hardening their homes. And at the end of the day, if we're going to have more severe weather and more storms and everything, the fact is that hardening reduces the amount of damage that these storms do. And that's a good thing. $150 million in a state our size is not enough money, but it's a good start and a good program. And I, was, I voted in favor of both of those things. And as far as property insurance, just remember, there's more that could have been done, and there were bad things in the bill, but as we say, let not the perfect be the enemy of the good, and at least we got something done. You may have seen, I just called for another special session, and it just failed, just Friday. Uh, I wanted us to address gun violence. I'll tell you that my call was not even for what I wanted. I would like to see us ban assault weapons. I don't think that we need weapons of war on the streets of our cities. This is not the Ukraine, and God knows it shouldn't be happening there either. But I didn't call for that because I know that my colleagues across the aisle wouldn't support that. I asked for three very small things, but to do something, my God, every day. One was to have universal background checks that just couldn't be ducked around and you couldn't make up excuses. Law-abiding citizens have nothing to fear from background checks. Number two is to take our very successful red flag laws that I was glad to vote for in 2018 when a lot of my colleagues on my side of the aisle didn't vote for it. They didn't think it was enough. Same slogan, let not the perfect be the enemy of the good. We did something. And now Congress looks to be following it. Red flag laws work. They save people's lives, but we should expand them so that not only law enforcement can initiate them. How about families? Let's let families who really know best, let's let them initiate it. Not every family wants to get involved with their family members with law enforcement. It's a simple common sense expansion that would save lives. Those two, I think, are universally or close to universally popular, very broad support in Florida and in the country. And the third one, not banning assault weapons, not taking away anyone's guns, but simply said, we're going to limit magazine size on rifles, not even on handguns. Nobody needs 30 or 50 or 100 rounds. You know, that's not a hunting tool. It serves one purpose, and if you want to have that for target practice, let's let only gun ranges be permitted to have them, and you can't take one home with you. You want to use it there, that's fine. Those are simple, common-sense things 
They were designed to appeal to my colleagues on the other side of the aisle for things we could unite on. Somehow Washington has managed to do that. But we couldn't get that done in state, and that's a, re a regret. And then all the culture wars and all the nonsense and kids being yelled at. It was an unhappy session. Um, a few things happened, but I'll just say this. We did do some stuff on school security and safety. That's a good thing. But the problems we see today are not limited to our schools. Supermarkets, nightclubs, uh, concert yeah. venues, uh, hospitals, and, and, and my God, houses of worship, churches and synagogues. I mean, where are we safe? So we need to do something to address that. And we just need to try to find some common ground. So this is the last time that I'll address you as your state rep. Again, I thank you very much for the honor, but I wish going out that we had a little more independent thinking in Tallahassee. I wish all the Republicans, friends of mine, who came up to me after one floor speech or another and said, you know, I really agreed with what you had to say. I wish I could have voted that way. I wish half of them actually did, and that when we see a problem, we not dismiss the problem. We find a solution, we work together, we compromise. I told my colleagues in probably my last floor speech, that's called legislating. And I wish our legislature did more of it. So thank you very much. Uh, I'm happy to answer any questions. As I said, it was uh, in many ways a sad session, but some progress was made kind of despite us. It shouldn't take that many special sessions to get it done. I won't talk about I was ranking Democrat on redistricting, what a mess that was. But um, again, I'm proud and honored to have been able to serve you. And thank you for that opportunity. And if there are any questions, I'm sure I've taken enough of your time already. So. Joe, we would all like to thank you for your eight years of service representing us. We know it wasn't easy. And we thank you. I have one question for you on the hardening dollars for homes. Is that available to condominiums, which are many, almost everyone's home in this city? I'm glad you asked me that. Um, there are some programs that are available to help condominiums, but you did, you know, a bill, I sponsored three bills on condominiums. They were swept up into the one collective condo bill that Representative Perez from South Dade brought. We didn't get it done during the session. The House passed the bill and the Senate passed the bill and somehow in the waning moments, they waited too late, it didn't get done. But in this special session, we actually came together and passed the big condo bill that was needed in the wake of Surfside. It does help with things like hardening. It does set some tough standards. Like I said, none of these bills are perfect, but this was a good one. And you know, I, I said with all my criticism of special sessions, that's what special sessions are for. When you've had each house robustly debate something and just not quite get it across the finish line and with a few weeks to think about it, you can come back and get it done. It's a good bill. It's a bill I'm proud we passed. It passed with bipartisan support. It does have some of those, not quite the same hardening, but it does have things that are concessions and let me tell you, there's a couple more things even now in the works that are going to help condominiums even more. We have to protect safety, but there's a balance with people who've been in place for a long time. They're on fixed incomes. They can't necessarily afford to make up all these years of deferred maintenance all at once. And we have to have, if you don't mind if I use a Latin term from the law, we have to have some Rahmanis for these people. And so we can, we can both sympathize and look for ways to protect them and still be sure safety standards aren't compromised. I want to compliment, by the way, this commission. As I know, you passed one of the very first municipal ordinances 
to get tough on making sure that these 40-year uh, updates were being done and done properly and that reports were made to the city. And you, know, you, you were a real leader in that. Other cities have followed, but congratulations to this Aventura commissioner. So the, the long-winded answer, as usual, to your question is, yes, some things were done to help condominiums With to be money. able to harden as well. Was there money in, was there an appropriation for that? Um, there is, there are some programs for it, but as I said, we didn't go far enough. The answer, in my opinion, and I know there, it's being looked at now, not just in state, but federally, the, and I've talked to a couple of our Congress people about it, the answer is for the government to guarantee loans to condominiums themselves. So the condominium has access to the credit facility. The individual residents would still pay it back, but they'd have the opportunity to pay that back over time, but they would become affordable and available with federal loan guarantees. The federal government guarantees student loans, and that's why they're available, and that's a good thing. It needs to do the same for condominiums so the repairs can be made now so they're safe, but the burden doesn't fall on all the individual condo owners to come up with individual loans right away. They can pay back over, you know, over 10 years or whatever. They could pay back their portion of the loans, but the loans would be cheap with federal loan guarantees. That's, that's the solution to that issue, and we are working on it. Good, thank you. Any commissioners, any questions? Okay, then we really thank you, Joe, all of us. Thank you, and, and I thank each of you. Thank you. And, and, and thank you. Okay. Back to our regular agenda, and I think the next item is item six. Um, ordinances first public reading. I'll ask the city clerk to read the ordinance. An ordinance of the city of Aventura, Florida, amending section 31-143, residential zoning districts of the city's land development regulations to permit buildings in the RMF4 zoning district to cast shadows on properties located in business zoning districts upon conditional use approval, providing for severability, providing for inclusion in the code, and providing for an effective date. Can I have a motion for approval of the ordinance made by Commissioner Narotsky, seconded by Commissioner Joel? Uh, Kevin, you're busy tonight. <laughs> I'm going to request that Community Development Director Kevin Klopp please review the item. If necessary, yeah, yes. <laughs> if necessary. I'm happy to do so if there are any questions or if you want me to repeat the presentation from earlier this evening. No? Does, does anyone need Mr. Klopp to repeat it? No. No. Okay. I'll open this item for public comment. Anyone from the public wishing to talk to us? Then I'm going to close the item for public comment and ask the city clerk for a roll call vote. Commissioner Friedland? Yes. Commissioner Joel? Yes. Commissioner Dr. Marks? Yes. Commissioner Narotsky? Yes. Commissioner Shelley? Yes. Vice Mayor Landman? Um, where, um, absent. She stepped out for a second. Okay. Um, Mayor Weissman? Yes. The motion passes. Thank you so much. As a point of order, when she comes, Mr. Attorney, when she comes back, is she allowed to vote on the item? Technically, no. Okay. No, we're good. He's absent. <laughs> okay, I'm going to request the city clerk to read the ordinance 6B. An ordinance of the city of Aventura, Florida, amending chapter 36 retirement, article 2, police pension plan and trust fund, by amending section 36-27, buyback from military service, prior law enforcement or correctional officer service, to permit buyback of service credits for prior military service. Providing for repeal, providing for severability, providing for inclusion in the code, and providing for an effective date. Can I have a motion for approval of the ordinance? Made by Commissioner Friedland, seconded by Commissioner Joel. I'm going to request Community Development Director Kevin Klopp at least to come up here and see if the commission wants the item reviewed. Mayor, I'll take this one. Okay. 
Uh, as this ordinance says... Uh, That's for, not what oh. it says on my paper. Okay, I'm sorry. Um, the ordinance is allowing police officers who have served in the military, allow, allow them to buy four years of service back and uh, have it added to their retirement. They would still have to work a normal career in law enforcement and, and change their the 20 or 25 years of service, but there it allows them to buy back for up to four years. We allow it for correction officers, officers who have served in the correctional facilities and for officers who have served in other police departments. Do any members of the commission have any questions or comments about this item? Okay, I'm gonna open the item to the public. Does anyone from the public wish to address the commission on this item? Seeing there's none, I'm closing it for public comment and I'm asking the city clerk for a roll call vote. Commissioner Friedland? Yes. Commissioner Joel? Yes. Commissioner Dr. Marks? Yes. Commissioner Narosky? Yes. Commissioner Shelley? Yes. Vice Mayor Landman? Yes. And Mayor Weissman? Yes. The motion passes. Thank you. Item seven, zoning hearings, quasi-judicial public hearing. Um, the quasi-judicial proce procedure shall be invoked for items 7A and 7B. I'm going to request the city attorney to provide the procedures for the quasi-judicial hearings for items 7A and 7B. Uh, thank you, Mayor. Uh, please be advised that the following items on the commission agenda uh, is qua are quasi-judicial in nature. If you wish to object or comment upon the items, please inform the mayor when she requests public comments. An opportunity for persons to speak on the items will be made available after the applicant and staff have made their presentations on the items. All testimony, including public testimony and evidence, will be made under oath or affirmation. Additionally, each person who gives testimony may be subject to cross-examination. If you refuse either to be cross-examined or be sworn, your testimony will be given its due weight. The general public will not be permitted to cross-examine witnesses, but the public may request the commission to ask questions of staff or witnesses on their behalf. Persons representing organizations must present evidence of their authority to speak for the organization. Further details of the quasi-judicial procedures may be obtained from the clerk. Thank you so much. I'm going to um, ask the city clerk to read the ordinance. Item 7A, first public hearing. Uh, Mayor, would you like me to um, swear in those wishing to offer testimony for these two items? Um, if that's your pleasure, I would have waited for you to read the ordinance. Okay. If you will be speaking on item 7A or 7B, please raise your right hand and be sworn in at this time. Do you solemnly swear or affirm the testimony you're about to give is the truth, the whole truth, and nothing but the truth to help you, God? Thank you. This is for item 7A, an ordinance of the City of Aventura, Florida, amending the comprehensive plan by amending the future land use map designation for a 1.55 acre parcel of land located at 2785 Northeast 183rd Street, from business and office to high density residential, providing for conflicts, providing for severability, providing for inclusion in the comprehensive plan, and providing for an effective date. Thank you so much. I'm gonna ask for a motion for approval of the ordinance made by uh, Commissioner Friedland, seconded by Commissioner Joel. I will request that Mr. Wasson please review this item. I'm going to, having it, it must have got mixed. And I'm happy to talk about the uh, buyback. Excuse me, we're having Community Development Director Kevin Klopp respond to this item. Thank you, Mayor. Uh, I'm happy to review the item uh, if necessary. The one thing I would like to put on the record again is that there isn't uh, a correction in the title of the ordinance. It will be medium high density residential rather than simply high density residential. If you'd like me to go through the presentation, I can, or any questions. Any of the commissioners need it repeated? No. Okay, does anyone from the public wish to address this item? Seeing as there's no one, I'm gonna close it for public comment. Um, and I'm gonna ask the city clerk for a roll call vote. Commissioner Friedland? Yes. 
Commissioner Joel? Yes. Commissioner Dr. Marks? Yes. Commissioner Narosky? Yes. Commissioner Shelley? Yes. Vice Mayor Landman? Yes. And Mayor Weissman? Yes. The motion passes. Thank you. I'm now going to request that the city clerk read the ordinance 7B. An ordinance of the city of Aventura, Florida, amending the official zoning map of the city of Aventura by amending the zoning designation from B2 Community Business District to RMF4 Multifamily High Density Residential for a 1.55 acre parcel of land located at 2785 Northeast 183rd Street, providing for severability, providing for inclusion in the code, and providing for an effective date. Thank you. Can I have a motion for approval of this item made by Commissioner Shelley, seconded by Vice Mayor Landman? I hope I have the right person. <laughs> Can I please request Community Development Director Kevin Klopp to review the item? I'm certainly happy to, if necessary. Uh, no additional uh, corrections necessary in this, but the next steps, uh, should you approve this, is he'll be back next month uh, for second reading as well as conditional use approval. Okay, any questions for Mr. Klopp? All right, I'm opening it, it up for community comments. Are there any comments? Anyone wishes to comment on this item? Seeing as there's none, I'm closing it for public comment. And I'm asking the city clerk for a roll call vote. Commissioner Friedland? Yes. Commissioner Joel? Yes. Commissioner Dr. Marks? Yes. Commissioner Narosky? Yes. Commissioner Shelley? Yes. Vice Mayor Landman? Yes. And Mayor Weissman? Yes. The motion passes. Thank you. The next item on our agenda is item eight, ordinances, second reading. I'm going to request the city clerk to read the ordinance A. Aventura City Commission, acting in its capacity as the governing board for the Aventura City of Excellence School, ACES, an ordinance of the City of Aventura, Florida, adopting the attached charter school operating and capital budget for the Aventura City of Excellence School, for fiscal year 2022-2023, July 1 to June 30, pursuant to section 4.05 of the city charter, authorizing expenditure of funds established by the budget, providing for budgetary control, providing for personnel authorization, providing for gifts and grants, providing for amendments, providing for encumbrances, providing for severability, and providing for an effective date. Can I have a motion for approval of this ordinance? Made by Commissioner Narotsky, seconded by Vice Mayor Landman. I'm going to request the city manager to please review this item. Thank you, Mayor. Uh, as this is second reading, this is the budget for ACES, the ACES school, in the uh, presenting a balanced budget of $11,656,029. This is to provide funding for the staffing, for capital improvements, and the overall operation of the school. Everything that goes on through ACES is in this budget and was approved in first reading. Okay, any commissioners have any questions or comments? Uh, well, I want to thank all that worked on it. I had many comments on first reading and they have been ameliorated, much to my, uh, much to my happiness, and I want to thank you. Um, does anyone from the audience wish to address this item? Seeing as there's none, I'm closing it to public comment, and I'm going to ask the city clerk for a roll call vote. Commissioner Friedland? Yes. Commissioner Joel? Yes. Commissioner Dr. Marks? Yes. Commissioner Narotsky? Yes. Commissioner Shelley? Mm. Vice Mayor Landman? Yes. And Mayor Weissman? Yes. The motion passes. Thank you. Next, I'm going to request the city clerk to read the ordinance B. Aventura City Commission acting in its capacity as the governing board for the Don Sofer Aventura High School, DSAHS, an ordinance of the City of Aventura, Florida, adopting, adopting the attached Don Sofer Aventura High School Budget Fund 191 for fiscal year 2022-2023, July 1 through June 30, pursuant to Section 4.05 of the City Charter authorizing expenditure of funds established by the budget, providing for budgetary control, providing for personnel authorization, providing for gifts and grants, providing for amendments, providing for encumbrances, providing for severability, and providing for an effective date. 
Thank you. Can I have a motion for approval of the ordinance made by Commissioner Joel, seconded by Commissioner Friedland? I'm going to request the city manager to review this item. Thank you, Mayor. This is a second reading also for Don, uh, Don Sofer Aventura High School. This budget is in the amount of $8,451,973. And similarly, it goes to all the operational and capital expenses for the school that we anticipate they will need this year. Um, the change, there was change to this budget uh, to reflect the increase to teacher salary allocation from two to two and a half percent. That's in here. Um, and if there's any questions on it. <laughs> Anyone have any questions? Any commissioners? Okay, anyone from the public wish to address this item? Seeing as no one does, I'm going to close it for public comment, and I'm going to ask the city clerk for a roll call vote. Commissioner Friedland? Yes. Commissioner Joel? Yes. Commissioner Dr. Marks? Yes. Commissioner Narotsky? Yes. Commissioner Shelley? Yes. Vice Mayor Landman? Yes. And Mayor Weissman? Yes. The motion passes. Thank you. The next order of business is item nine, resolutions. I don't think we have any tonight. So it takes us to item 10, reports. Do any members of the commissioners have any reports to make? Thank you, Mayor. Okay, I'm sorry, I'm sorry Dr. Marks. Please go ahead. I just want to mention that our Youth Advisory Committee held an event at, at the end of May on the 22nd, and it was called Aventura Strong. It was their healthy walk, and they did a beautiful job. And the interesting thing was they gave me some great recommendations to give to the next year's group about things that they learned and that maybe can make this group even better. So kudos to the work that they did. Thank you. Anyone else? Okay, then um, I'm going to open this meeting. We're on item 11 for public comments. I'm going to request the city attorney to review with the commission members the purpose of this item. Uh, thank you, Mayor. So this is the uh, three-minute opportunity for a speaker to speak on matters within the jurisdiction of the city commission. It's not a time to have a dialogue with the commission, but simply to speak uh, for three minutes on items of concern within the city of Aventura. Thank you. Um, it is now open to the public. Please come up to the microphone. Good evening. One Inga. second, please. Sure. State your name and your address. Yes, my name is Alice Bonvicini. My address is 3029 Northeast 188th Street. I am here to talk to you again about Founders Park South tonight and the pickleball court affair. A quick update, I was told that the numbers on the two online petitions that we mentioned uh, to you last, uh, last month are growing, and that this I know from actually personal experience. Also, the residents who are unenthusiastic about this project of building pickleball courts at this location of Founders Park South is also getting bigger. During the last meeting, multiple uh, residents brought in their concerns about this wonderful green sanctuary, which is going to change drastically if the pickleball court project is green-lighted. There were concerns about the traffic, which would be affecting the neighboring buildings, like Aventura Marina and Eden Bay. But what about the noise pollution? Well, tonight I would like to add something about the noise that this project would bring upon the near communities. A few weeks ago, I couldn't sleep, and I was scrolling Facebook, and I saw a recommended article. And clearly, the idea that Mark Zuckerberg has eyes and ears on us is not a fantasy, because the article was titled, In a Pickle, Local Community Fed Up with Noise from Nearby Pickable Court. In a community far from here, but not different from ours, a group of residents has been protesting to have pickleball courts shut down. They complain the unbearable noise. Philadelphia, I'm going to read you a little part. Pickleball, a seemingly innocuous paddle sport that has exploded in popularity over the recent years, has become a major nuisance in one of Philadelphia's neighborhoods. Residents who live across the street from the pickable courts at the Water Tower Recreation Center in Chestnut Hill said that they're fed up with the constant popping of bolts being hit. Some called for pickable to be shut down altogether, and if now they're planning on filing a lawsuit against the city for breaking its own noise ordinance. Eight to nine months a year, you cannot open your window, Joe Donald said. Did you ever try to live in a place where you cannot open your window? That's how loud it is. Philadelphia said it will open more pickable courts at the recreation center that could help alleviate the noise problem. 
So on top of the impact that the pickable courts will have here in Aventura on the nature setting that is so loved by many residents of all ages, the noise pollution is not something to underestimate. Something to think about before this project might be put into motion and might have an even more number of Aventura residents upset. Please listen to us. There is nothing radical in protecting and preserving this beautiful natural oasis. It is not too late to admit that the Founders Park South, Founders Park South is not the right location for this court. And it's not too late to find a better one. Do the right thing in 2022, preserving nature should be the right thing. Thank you very much. Thank you very much. Anyone else? Please state your name and addresses. Hi, my name is Harriet Brotman. Um, this is Edna Schenkel. We live at the point of Aventura on 212. Well, I'm at 21205 Yard Club Drive. Harriet I'm is 21050 Edna. Northeast 38th Avenue. And we wanted to know the status of the pickleball. What's going on? Are we going to get it? And I know the lady before us just mentioned everything uh, that was negative to what we want to say. And we know that pickleball is essential. We'd love to have it. Uh, every community in the United States has a pickleball court, except for Aventura. And we're just going to be very short and sweet about it. And we would love to know the status. Edna's going to go on about the rest. Well, no. I, many of us in Aventura drive to Hollywood several times a week to play pickleball. Um, we would have many more people here tonight if it wasn't the end of the season and many people have gone away for the summer. But um, I think it would add to the recreation level of the city of Aventura. It's going to be in a park. I don't see it as in affecting so many homes or a noise level. But um, I know there's, there's one in, well, you know, there are pickleball courts everywhere. We came rather late to the meeting, not as prepared as the woman before us. Um, I hope we'll have an opportunity to be more prepared and come again. Is this an item that you're going to continue to discuss? In public forum, you can discuss anything. At any time. Any, any items that are ongoing, and the city manager will reach out to you after this meeting. Okay. And I'm, give you that. Now, I'm going to disclose. This is the first time I have ever met Harriet but we have been I, responding to emails for the better part of nine months or a year. Right. So it's my pleasure to see you today and be able to put a face to the name. Thank you. Mayor, can I, can I say something? Yes. Uh, the, the managers asked me to look at some legal issues with respect to the location of the pickleball courts. So I'm in the process of preparing a memorandum for him about it, which he'll have by the end of this week. Okay, thank you. And Mr. City Manager, will you be sure and get back to the to these citizens and to the other group? Yes, absolutely. Okay. Great. Just, thank thanks. you. So we'll have information from our legal department by the end of the week. Perfect. Thank you very much. Thank you. Thank you. Hello. Uh, my name is Sandy Rockwork. I live at uh, 20940 Northeast 37th Avenue here in Avatar. I just had a question regarding how you go about this process of uh, deciding where the pickleball court goes. Has there been a sound study done in terms of that location for those people who live near it who are maybe concerned over the amount of sound? Um, I, I will turn that question over to the city manager. As stated by the attorney, this isn't where we engage back and forth. But the city manager will get back to you with that information. Thank you. And he might say it right now. Um, I'll just see you right after the meeting. I'd okay. be happy to Thank you very much. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you for coming. Hi. Um, Name Larissa and address. Dadnik, 3300 Northeast 191st Street, um, 1814. Hello. I'm a member of multiple groups of Aventura residents on social media. Many residents, as well as me personally, concerned about two items. However, it is hard to know how and where we can express our opinion so that the act of protection is taken. Item number one, Founders Park South ceasing to exist the way it is now. Residents are worried that peaceful and beautiful park of our city will be lost. For many, it is a place of serenity. Families, elderly, disabled children are always welcome and safe there. Residents are frustrated since nowadays, 
um, modern society promotes and embraces creation of parks. On the other note, those who play pickleball have expressed that Thunders Park is a poor location for the court due to high winds and intensive sun entire day. Second item is increase of aggressive drivers who disobey speed limit and safe driving practices. I have accessed proposed budget, budget of spending American Rescue Plan if, if the courts that are being planned to build in the park south are moved to, are moved to the different location, we might have uh, additional $600,000 to spend. According to CDC government website, public information, one speed camera costs about $130,000 with installation and a full year of maintenance. So with $600,000, we, we, we can have four cameras to control speed and send automated tickets. Also, another item that was mentioned in those chats was very unsafe pedestrian crossings that continue to come up and come up. Um, many crossings do not have speed bumps. There are not clear signs. There are not clear lights. It is unsafe. Many drivers do not pay attention. So I believe that, but, sorry, that speed bumps and cameras could help us control that. Um, another point about speed bumps was that around Aventura Circle, people believe there is not enough, since this is a very high pedestrian traffic area, and many are concerned. Thank you. Thank you very much. Thank you. Thank you. Is there anyone else? Good evening. Good evening. My name is Siu Wang, 3115 North East 184th Street, 4301 Aventura, Florida, 33160. Happy to see everyone here. And dear commissioners, city mayor, city manager, I have a concern about this Founders Park South, this beautiful paradise park we all love. I hope you could take a, make a visit and uh, would appreciate the park the way we do. And uh, Pickleball Court, I emailed all of you, and uh, I'm, I was supporting it, and now I have a second thought. It's really also because of article concern about the legal issues arise, and uh, there are two two parts of the legal issues. One would be the communities nearby it, and they would suffer the noise level, and they could not open their windows. And if they decided to sit at their balcony, it's going to be a big problem. And number two, from the players. I happened, like I shared in the email, I happened to a friend to hospital, and he, she suffered broken arm and broken teeth. Two of the teeth were gone. And uh, luckily, she were able. To, she has to pay out of her own pocket. But every hospital we went to, the very first question would be, "Was attorney involved?" That kind of, plus with the article came across uh, internet, kind of got me worried. Are we ready for our taxpayers to fund potential? legal actions towards the city, then by the end it would be from our taxpayers' pocket. And have we considered all the best options for our local residents? And uh, I was just thinking, we're thinking loud about this. Thank you very much. Thank you again. Thank you. Anyone else? Okay. Is there any other business? Seeing as there's none, I'm going to ask for an motion to adjourn. That's a motion. Made by Commissioner Shelley, seconded by Commissioner Joel. This meeting is formally adjourned.